Oh my god, Darnell Mooney, you gotta meet that catch, bro. Oh, so close. Uh, and James Cook, holy crap. Cowboys? Dang, he cooked you guys. And, um, what is it called? Uh, what was it? It was the, the, the bot. Oh yeah, Baker Mayfield. <sighs> he was unbelievable. 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 And, um, what is it called? Oh yeah, the Niners clinched the NFC West. Let's go. Player of the day. NFL Sunday recap, week 15. Misdirection, looking, everyone's covered, uh -oh. Keenum throws do back that. foot, and that one is snatched! No way! Unbelievable! That's up. Yeah. Deep. Hail Mary, end zone, deflected, oh. tipped and intercepted! Almost caught! Cleveland moves to 9-5. and five. Mooney had it! Oh God! Mooney had it on the ground! No! God, please, no! 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 Now, as mentioned, the 49ers have won back-to-back -back division titles. To show you who you are and what you're going to be when it really, really counts. How about them Cowboys? <laughs> <laughs> of course please like and subscribe hope you guys enjoyed the nfl week 15 sunday recap we had 11 games going on a lot of crap happened i'll get into the playoff race this will definitely be a longer intro than normal but um with that said i'll get into the injuries that happened um i guess so we'll start with what is it called um uh the the the, the where is it okay no that's there we go okay injuries that happened on sunday uh nothing much because again the the commanders don't really matter right now um and no one died i guess that's good oh yeah brian Robinson jr again he didn't play for against the rams so <clears throat> we'll see if you can play in thankful in week 16 in New York. Um, not that much of the Titans either, and they are eliminated. A lot of guys weren't playing. Malik Willis was also inactive. I'm not too, too surprised there. Uh, or the Bucks Again, a couple guys got injured, but it wasn't anything crazy. Like Devin White, Carlton Davis, obviously the guys you'd expect to be out. Were, weren't in. Um, what is it called? Jalen Hurts, again, he's questionable. We'll see if he can go tonight. Uh, Nothing much for the Jets against Zach Wilson. That's really the only big one. He left off the concussion, and John Frank Myers also injured his hip. So those are two injuries. Again, they play in, against co the Commanders next week on Sunday. Um, Giants, nothing crazy. Again, some guys are inactive. What is it called? Randy Bulk injured his hamstring. And uh, Jamie Gillen came in and uh, kicked a field goal. That was pretty cool. They, of course, play on Christmas Day in Philadelphia. So that'll be interesting. Saints, nothing crazy. Again, uh, what is it called? Chris Olave did not play, probably because they have a huge Thursday night game against the Rams in L.A. That'll be a very interesting game. That's probably going to decide who's the seventh seed at, at the end of the season, to be completely honest, though. Um, nothing much, again, for the other guys. Though Ryan Ramchick didn't play, but again, probably for the same reason. Again, he's been banged up most of this year. Um... Patriots, some guys get injured, like Hunter Henry was injured. Again, they play on Christmas, on, um, Christmas Eve night on that holiday classic game. Dolphins, Tyreek Hill did not play, but it was really no problem. We'll get to that later, obviously. Um, but, again, some injuries on defense, too. But, they, um, of course, they will play um, the freaking Do um, Cowboys next week in front of the whole country. So, that'll be very interesting. Rams, Rob Havenstein and uh, Tutu Atwell were probably the two biggest guys. Some other depth pieces, like, uh, oh, yeah, Anna Kilt, Weatherspoon, they all got hurt, of course. The Rams play on Thursday, so those guys need to be ready to go if we want to if we want to win that game. Uh, Chiefs, um, uh, yeah, that, that, that they're doing their thing. Isaiah Pacheco did not play, of course. They will go up against the Raiders at home on Christmas Day as well. Jags, um, a couple guys, but obviously got injured. Tyson Campbell really is the one guy who was who was inactive. They have a huge game in Tampa on Sunday on Sunday as well. Um, Texans. Yeah, guys are injured. Uh, uh, what is it called? CJ Stroud not play. They do play against. Who the heck are they playing? Oh, you're playing the Browns um, at home next week. So that that game will probably be um, a big. Um, what is it called? Playoff game. Jimmy Ward also is questionable for week 16. He got concussed. Packers again. They're playing in Carolina. So I mean, yeah, yeah, that's what's going on. Uh, Lions. They have some guys who are still questionable. Um, Cowboys. A lot of guys got hurt, but it wasn't anything crazy. Like. Yeah, no one died, so I think they should be good there. I keep looking at these, like, again, no one's really, like, no nothing crazy with these injuries. Yeah. 
Um, some inactives, obviously. And then today, um, what is it called? Ronnie Stanley will be questionable. Of course, they play in San Francisco in the game of the year. Uh, with all that said, let's look at this playoff picture. Yeah, it's done with those injuries. But, looking at it, okay, guys. The teams that have been eliminated, the Titans and Jets both lost. That means they're out. Uh, Cardinals and Commanders also lost, so that means they're both out. They both math math mathematically cannot get in. And then also looking at the playoff picture, let's start out from the top. Both the Ravens clinched a playoff win last night, um, a spot last night, and also if they win out, they will get the one seed. That's not going to be easy by any means for sure. They don't even honestly have to need, um, win out because the, the truth is that game week 17 is going to come down to who's going to get the one seed because uh, maybe not even that. We'll see. But yeah, the Dolphins obviously have a huge road test ahead. We'll get to them when we review their game. But the Dolphins and Ravens obviously are both um, um, competing for this, but this is definitely a very interesting race because... The Ravens of the Niners and then the Dolphins the next week. If they drop, honestly, if they drop both of those games, which could very well happen, don't forget about these Chiefs. And even if they drop one, uh, no, yeah, if they drop both of those games, that's really the only way the Chiefs are getting the one seed, in my opinion. But are they going to get it? Probably not, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but then, obviously, the Dolphins are the two seed. They're in a very scary spot for them. They're going to have to. If they win next week, that would be massive for them. Chiefs, though, they're the three seed. Um, Yeah, they're, they're there. Uh, very difficult for them to get the one seed. They need the Ravens to lose their next two games, which, again, isn't entirely impossible. But judging, again, the Dolphins in cold weather, again, not great. But then again, the Dolphins did go in there last year and were, got blown out in that for, in the, um, after the third quarter, and they ended up winning it. So you never know. Jags, they're the four seed. Uh, they're hanging on for dear life. But, again, they have a pretty easy game. Uh, they got a game against the Bucks next week. The Jags are in a really tough spot. Um, again, then I'll say it, three-way tie for the AFC South. Uh, and then obviously the Browns nine and five in a really good spot. But if they if they drop a game against the what is it called the uh, Texans, which will be a huge game, that would suck for them. They still have a chance to win the division, ironically too, because think about it. If the Brown if the Browns are able to just again win some of these games they have coming up, they're not going to be all easy by any means for sure. But if they went out and the Ravens again drop these two games, the, the, again the Dolphins on the the what is it called Browns and Chiefs really want this um, Ravens team to struggle the next two weeks. Will it happen? Again, we don't know. But again, the Ravens next two games really hinge for these um, for the Browns and Chiefs because again their playoff hopes and like scenarios for the seedings really hinge on um are, um depend on those. The Bengals huge win there again. They got a tough couple games up, coming up, but again if they're able to hammer it against the Steelers on Saturday, they'll be in a really good spot. Again, we'll keep going once we get into the games. Obviously, the Bills, um, they're going to get in the playoffs. I'm going to say that right here. So, it's basically, there's three, honestly, four teams that are going for one playoff spot right now. Again, maybe the Jaguars are really, yeah, the Jaguars, Colts, and Texans, three-way tie. Because for all the three of those teams, the easiest way to get in the playoffs is, again, winning that division. The Jags are obviously the best spot right now because they have all those tiebreakers. But my, my opinion, Texans and Colts game... That could be for the playoffs, or it could be meaningless. That'll be very interesting there. But the Bengals, if they lose a game, the Colts and Texans game will be for the division, in my opinion. I mean, for that last wild card spot. Because the Bills, <laughs> they ain't losing anytime soon. And then the Broncos, um, again, they have to win out, and they need some help, too. So, the really, again, the Steelers are just playing so bad. So, I, I again, they could technically get in, but that would be really tough for them. Um, it really sucks, though, because, again, the Bills are just playing so well. They'll probably be that sixth spot, unless the Browns start losing. So, it's chaos, though, but there's literally four teams trying to get one playoff spot. Maybe even five, because, again, if you're the Texans, Colts, or Jags, you need to win that division, because the likelihood, if you don't, to make the playoffs is very low. And then, obviously, the Broncos and, um, what is it called? Not the, not the Bills. The Broncos and, um, Bengals are both going to try to get that, because... Uh, uh, again, the, the Bengals are in a really good spot right now, but if they went out, obviously they're in. Like, if all these teams went out, they're going to get in, but it's very interesting with that. And then I've seen the NFC with the um, playoff seedings. Um, Niners clinched the NFC West, so, um, yeah. But obviously, again, if the Eagles lose tonight, the, the Niners don't, like, literally, they just have to win their next two games, and they don't have to, they can bench their starters against the Rams, which would be really nice, but I'm going to be honest, I kind of want to beat the Niners straight up to get in if we do. Uh, Eagles 10-3, and three. again, they, they play tonight. Cowboys are in a really rough spot, even though they did clinch the conference because of some losses that happened. I mean, clinch the um, clinch the playoff spot, but yeah, they, they got a really tough road because they need the Eagles to lose tonight, and they need them to lose to the Giants. Meanwhile, for the Lions, um, what is it called? They're, they're, they're sitting pretty here in the three seed. They could actually honestly win the conference, to be honest. If they finish 13, I think they might have a tiebreaker over there. I don't think they do. They, yeah, they might have it over the Niners. That's very interesting there. Um, Bucks, well... They, they look good. Vikings, Rams, Saints, that's chaos. Seahawks can keep their playoff hopes alive with a win. Falcons, Packers are in a really tough spot. The Packers actually have a better chance than, I'd honestly say, the Seahawks. They just need to, I mean, kind of take care of business these last couple weeks and then me. If they have the Rams lose, which could very well happen. Um, then, obviously, the Giants and Bears, they're still technically in it, but they're not really in it. And then, obviously, these teams are eliminated. Sorry about that. I just had to go through all the playoff chaos. Of course, we'll get even, even it into more of that once we do the recast. But that's all I got there. Let's get into our first game, Texans and Titans here with the highlights.
on second and eight. Play action from Levis. Puts a man under it. Fires, and it's good. Big play, Traylon Burks. He's back. Little movement pre-snap. Could be a free play. Levis fires down the side. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> it is good. <laughs> Second and nine, play action from Levis. Throws across his body, slings one far side, and was that picked? Yes, it was. Forces the field goal. That's been their calling card this season. So Fairbairn, it makes a big play on third down. Big kick, 53 yards, and the kick from Fairbairn is perfect. Last week, and here the Titans have to try to do it again with a different formula. Levis, but the football is loose. What's the call here? Spoke in the trade at the end of August from New England. He's been a godsend this year for Mike Vrabel. And once again, Keenum, little misdirection, looking. Everyone's covered. Yeah. Keenum oh, oh, throws do that. that foot, and that one is snatched. No way. Unbelievable. The Houston Texans. Again, feels the pressure, buys some time, and he oh. puts a perfect pass into the hands of Singletary. And now ball security is so huge for Houston. Singletary slips the initial tackle. Singletary no. is going to score. John Weeks, the snapper, and Johnston, the holder. Fairbanks kick is good, <laughs> and the Texans win. Titans in overtime and what I thought was gonna be a tie. 19 to 16 was the final score. Again, they are probably like again, they're still alive in the playoff race. Um, they got a lot to do to actually convince me that they could make it, but this has just been an unbelievable year for them. Of course, they have the Browns next week in a massive game in that playoff race. Five seed versus eight seed. Again, they're not eight seed isn't in the playoffs, but whatever. Titans fall to five and nine. It's been a rough year. Um, Derrick Henry might not play for them next year, which probably will happen. And um they got the Seahawks next week, so maybe playoff spoiler, but they're out of the playoffs. K and uh, Tim Kelly's a terrible offense coordinator. Fire him right now. Case Keenum was terrible. Yeah, he was. He had that one again. Outside of the last drive, he was god awful. He had again. He shooted through that game on um, game clinching interception. But Dalton Schultz, who was the player of the game for them, had some massive blocks helping out Devin Singletary, who had a big day. But again, Noah Brown getting injured sucks. He had eight for eighty two and a touchdown. But yeah. Again, for the guy who stepped up for Case Keenum, he, he he almost lost in the game. But I will say he did make some good throws in that last drive. But yeah, yeah, he's definitely a backup. You can see why as well. Outside of that receiving, no one did crap. Devin Singletary again on a massive. They had over 100, like 170 total yards. Defensively, though, big, some guys really stepped up. Obviously, this run this run defense has been really good all year. Um, 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 with that said, though, they got so much pressure. They were bullying the Titans up front. Um, and obviously, this offensive line for the Titans has been the worst they've had in a long time, as Derrick Henry has sh um, shown by his performance. But pick from Steven Nelson, some really big tackles. They did a really good job. Like, the whole entire game, I loved how this team played. But... For the Titans, their offensive line needs to just get completely re re revamped. They came in the year as the worst in the league, and they played like it, especially in this game. Will Levis, again, <sighs> the play calling was just trash for him. Again, you saw that interception. That was honestly a great play by Steven Nelson, but he could have done a little bit better job reading the fields, but he did make some huge throws. Running the ball, obviously, Derrick Henry, worst, probably worst game of his career, 16 carries, 9 yards. Um... He, of course, came into this game with, like, I don't even know, freaking, he, he, he like, owns the Texans. And in this game, they own him. Will Levis did run for a touchdown, though. Uh, Receiving-wise, I mean, Traylon Burks, cool. Nick Brett Westbrook, cool. But, like, yeah. Um, Defensively, um, there's really not, again, there is a little bit to talk about. Because, like, the secondary did a really good job overall. Obviously, Eric Guerrero with, I uh, know, my bad, Elijah Mullen with that pick six. That was a terrible throw by KS Keenum. I don't know what the hell he's doing. Diego go after he did have two sacks, though. Again, being injured to hell and back, they did do a good enough job to win this football game outside of some big plays. But obviously with this offense putting up 204 total yards of offense and not being able to run the football, yeah, it wasn't a great day, even though the Texans did put 340. 
Uh, both teams turned over the football. Both teams were pretty bad on fourth down, uh, third down, my bad. And, um, yeah, this wasn't a great game overall, guys. But if you go to overtime, it was pretty entertaining. Probably the keys to game grades. And for Houston, uh, Davis Mills for over 250 yards. So Case Keenum started. He got close to that. They did not put up, um, they did put up 123 points and still won. And run the ball less than 15 times. They ran the ball a good amount, honestly, because that's how they're going to win. But Texans offensively, obviously, Case Keenum was trash, but they were able to overcome it somewhat. The um, offensive line did struggle a big, um, big time. Uh, what is it called uh, uh, up uh, in the interior, as expected, because, again, everyone's injured. So, with that said, I'll probably give them two minuses. I don't care they scored that game-winning field goal, guys. That was not a, uh, No, I'll give them a minus. It's the back quarterback. But, yeah, they did not play that well. Defensively, Malik Collins bashing Derek Henry. They got, yep, Steven Nelson and Derek Seeley. They only got one turnover, but it was a big one, and they did not give up 100 yards to Derek Henry. That's about as textbook as you can get. I'll give them seven pluses. Yeah, a couple big plays in the secondary, but um, I can uh, pass with it with how good they played again against the run. And if they continue to do that against the Browns and don't give up any big plays, that could be a win for the Texans next week. Now let's look at the Titans. All right, obviously the Titans did not likely have a chance to make the playoffs, but again, with Derrick Henry having his worst game of his career, Tim Kelly really struggling with, um, um what is it called, with the offensive line schematically. Of course, they really did not get into any sort of gap scheme runs at all. Again, they're a zone-blocking unit that just doesn't have, the like, really the strength at all to do that. So, like, again, the holes weren't big. It was just complete freaking mess. Um, offensively, eight minuses. I don't care they got some yards a little bit, but that was just terrible. Defensively, they did do exactly what they did last week, in, but they did get a four field goal. So, defensively, decent job, I guess. I'll probably give them two plus because they kept them in the game. But, you know, it was just a really frustrating game, and that game really just t tells you what type of season it's been for the Titans. But, tough loss, whatever. Okay, now let's get into the Bucks and uh, Packers. Oh, God, Baker Mayfield played out of his freaking mind in Lambeau. Holy crap. Here were the highlights. Really just him, though. The field. His Bucks have won two in a row. They lead the NFC South. A huge game on the road today at Lambeau versus the Packers. That's right. Facing this man, Jordan Love, who has more wins and TD passes than Aaron Rodgers. Points is most important. A 39-yard attempt for Chase McLaughlin, and his kick is good. Gordon. Fourth down and two. Love to the air, to the end zone. Incomplete. Nowhere near Jaden Reed to work on. Mayfield in the pocket, long time, lost the football! Packers say they have it, and they do! A minute to play in the first quarter, it's second and goal. Love to the tight end, crack! He's in for a Packers touchdown! Third down and six. Mayfield to the end zone, Evans, touchdown! Just sneaks it through for McLaughlin. To put Tampa Bay back in the lead, and he does just that. Drive. Mayfield, he's got White at the 10 5. Touchdown! Rashad White! Love. Here comes the rush. Love has a lane to run. He throws. End zone! And it's. Godwin's been fantastic. Third and four, and that pass is caught by Moore. First down and Moore. David Moore exploding to the end zone. Love, pressure coming. He's in trouble. He lost the football. Scooped up by Tampa Bay. He leads 34 to 20. A handoff to Rashad White up the middle. First down and more. Rashad White, and he wisely goes to the ground. Seven and seven with their third straight win. Packers fall to six and eight with their second straight loss, and they now do not control their own destiny. Uh, destiny to make the playoffs, but they got to go to Carolina next week to I don't know bounce back something like that. Bucks they got to play the Jaguars in a massive game of actually division leaders right now. All right, Baker. There's really nothing bad you can say about the way he played. Yeah, he had the fumble in the first quarter, but outside of that, guys, like Baker was just un freaking believable. 
that's just the simple truth about it. Four touchdowns, 381 yards. First um, Bucks quarterback ever to have a um, passer rating. What is it called? Perfect pass. No, not Bucks quarterback. First quarterback ever to go into Lambeau Field and have a perfect pass rating. As well as, what is it called? Um, throwing for over 350 yards, four plus touchdowns, and 75 plus percent completion percentage. He was just unbelievable. The running game was also pretty decent. Jay Zemmons did have a couple of nice runs. Rashad White obviously ate 90 yards, has, um, has over 100 total yards. I think like the third straight, fourth, fifth straight game, I think, something like that. Chris Godwin was big, 10 catches, 155 yards. He was really good in the slot. Obviously, David Moore had that game clutching touchdown, 52 yarder, where he ran by everybody. Mike Evans wasn't super consistent, but he did catch that 19 yarder. And as well, Rashad White caught a touchdown and duke the shoes out of Ruby Ford. Go give the huge full, um, tight end slash fullback had a nice touchdown as well. Defensively, um, they were really good. Anton Field Jr. had 10 tackles. The coverage was overall really good again. On the outside, Christian Izin was awesome in man. Alonzo David had nine tackles, half a sack. Anthony Nelson also had a sack. Uh, Shaq Barrett had half a sack. Again, the pressure wasn't too consistent overall, but they did do a good job penetrating with Kalaj Kansi. He actually used a lot more power moves than I expected him to use because, again, he's a much of a pull and swim, swim type of guy. But he did do a decent job there. Chase McLaughlin also had two big field goals for the Packers, though. Jordan Love was actually pr probably pretty good. I think yeah, some of his drafts were a little bit too deep, but 29 for 39, 284, two touchdowns. Aaron Jones was okay in his return, um, but obviously that fumble at the end. But, yeah, third down, the Packers weren't great. Dontavian Wicks was really the only guy separating a ton, 6 for 97 overall. Jaden Reed did have a nice touchdown, though. Romeo Dobbs struggled in this game. Malik Heath couldn't make any catches um, inside the numbers. And defensively, I mean, th there's nothing good you can say, guys. They sucked. Again, they got a little pressure in that first quarter, but outside of that, guys, like, the, the safeties were trash. The quarterback play was almost as bad as you get, like, Carrington Down had to die for his worst game of the season. And I just didn't see enough, like, team, like, defense in this game. For this, um, again, the Bucks had nearly four, uh, had 450 total yards. They didn't have the ball as long, though, ironically, so that's pretty cool. But either way, um, both teams, he had 50% on third down, but those were some bad third downs they had when they didn't, um, get it. But... Overall, yeah, the Bucks showed up, and they bought, shocked the Packers, to be completely honest. Great job, Bucks. Thanks a lot. Time to keys the game grades. All right, this Bucks offense, Baker not giving yet. Yeah, he he was the complete opposite of what he was on, that, on Christmas two years ago. But for Rashad White, 30-plus touches, I think he had somewhere near that. Mike Evans not get, um, getting crapped on by Jair Alexander or Karen Valentine. Again, he did get shut down a little bit, but overall, he did a pretty good job. Bucks offensively, I mean, there's really nothing bad you can say about him. Seven pluses. The offensive line, again, was a little – the offensive line – was a little shaky at times, but outside of that, they were good. Defensively, don't suck on third down. They were actually pretty good there. Kalaj Kansi was not really still doing anything against the run. He hasn't done anything against the run this year. And don't get beat by on Jaden Reed on a jet sweep. No, they didn't. Um, Bucks defensively, pretty good job. I'll probably give you guys two pluses. Could have been better overall, but there's really nothing bad you can say considering the injuries they were dealing with. Now let's look at the Packers. All right, for Green Bay, no arm punch from Jordan Love. Yeah, he didn't do that. They didn't run the ball nearly for that much yardage. And Rondo Dobbs struggled in this game. Offensively, again, they just couldn't really keep up with the Bucks. I mean, they did for like the first half. Second half, it kind of just got away from them, though. And they also, again, they didn't really slow the game down. For that reason, I'll have to give them three minuses. But Jordan Love did do enough to win this game, in my opinion. It was just the fact, again, they didn't get this running game going. The offensive line really let him down. Defensively, jump every um, route on the boundary on third down and definitely collapse on um, every uh, Rashad White carry. They were trash. I don't know, eight minuses. The, there's nothing good they really did outside of getting a couple pressures in that first quarter. But with all that said, yeah, that's all I got for the Packers, guys. And now let's get to the next game, Bears and Browns. Yeah, this game was nuts. Here were the highlights. The Cleveland Browns take the field at Brown Stadium with their eyes firmly set on the postseason. Second down and eight. Flacco with pressure up the middle, throws and it's intercepted by Eddie Jackson. Jackson inside the 10, breaking tackles and down to the 2. Fields looking, backside pressure, Fields spins away. Going the other direction now, Fields on the run, throws for the end zone, Komet with the catch. 7, Bears rush 4, Flacco, flush, Hall got him, deep, looking for Cooper on the sidelines, Amari Cooper, Sprint right, sprint right. There's Flacco to the right, looking in the end zone. Throws, jump ball, the Joku pulls it in. Flacco on first down, over the middle, and it's oh. intercepted. Off the deflection, it's Tremaine Edmonds. Edmonds on the move. Flacco trying to make the stop. He can't do it, and Edmonds is in. Two smaller body guys, two nickel guys. And then drop two, three technique, and defensive tackle rushers up the middle. Trying to confuse Justin Fields. Well, Orquez with the punt. Fair catch called for. Muff punt. Oh, Bruce covered wow. by the Browns. Blacko off. Got him. Looking over the middle, and it's intercepted. Oh. Picked off. 
up by Tyreek Stevenson. And one play fake. Fields going to run and he dives forward. Oh, I don't know. I think he's short. Off the play fake. Flacco looking deep. Over the middle. Goodwin is out there. He drops it in. Goodwin down inside the 25. Try for Hopkins. And the kick right down the middle. There's Flacco. Looking downfield. Open and Cooper <laughs> makes the catch and breaks free. Cooper tiptoes all the way for the touchdown. Third and 15. Flacco off his back foot. The Joku is there. He's got the first down and more. Spinning down the sidelines. The tight end inside the Hopkins. For the lead. And Cleveland's on top. Sets up. Throwing deep. Hail Mary, end zone, deflected, oh. tipped, and intercepted. And the Browns escape first. The Bears with a 20 to 17 crazy 10 boy comeback. Yeah, Matt Aberflus, why are you still a head coach? The Bears fall to five and nine, and yeah, basically are out of the playoff race for sure now. But they got a tank bowl game at home next week against the Cardinals. Chicago is looking like that. Browns on your hand, <coughs> clinched there, what is it called, what is it, 420 record in freaking 20-something years, something like that, whatever, they, they got a winning record for the first time since way back in 2020, which isn't actually that long ago, but whatever, like basically like two of the last, what is it, 20 years, but they moved them on 9-5 and five and are a huge, whole entire game up, if not more, on every other team in the wildcard picture, obviously though, they do lose to the Texans, that is very interesting, because the Texans would, of course, have to head-to-head -head there, so, yeah, and, of course, they're actually still alive for the division. So, the Browns, they still got to win these games. Like, that's definitely for sure. But they are in a very good spot. Uh, again, they got a game in Houston next week. But, looking at the stats, though, uh, Justin Fields overall, yes, he was very inaccurate in this game. But the offensive line really struggled, again, giving him a clean pocket for most of the game. Or giving him really any pocket at all, because he had a backup a lot. The um, first interception was really ugly. Um, the second one was just get great coverage. So, there's really nothing you can say about um, the first, the second one. But the first one, that was a bad interception. He should not have thrown that football. But he did have, did have a touchdown and 166 yards outside of that. The running game really struggled to really get off the ground, like, literally at all. Like, Roshan Johnson had one nice run, and then he just looked like brick feet outside of that. Receiving-wise, everyone got clamped. Cole Clement did have a nice touchdown, though. Defensively, um, they really turned it on in that third quarter. Of course, um, what is called Tremaine Evans had a pick six and nine total tackles. Kyler Gordon was also very good in the slot and against the run. They got consistent pressure, again, from their guys in one-on-ones. Eddie Jackson had a nice interception. Tyreek Stevenson also had a pick. Jaquan Brisker honestly probably had his best game of his career in coverage, but obviously that tough touchdown to David Njoku he gave up. But really wasn't his fault. Again, that was just a great play by him. Browns, though, um, yeah, Joe Flacco slung the freaking rock. 28-44, 374 yards, two touchdowns, three picks. He was not afraid to throw that ball. It was crazy. They didn't even try to run the football either. Like, again, the, the thing with Joe Flacco is, yeah, he might throw a couple picks, but he'll do stuff like this. Obviously, it's a big plays. Like, Marquis Goodwin catching that 57-yard bomb. Uh, David Njoku, 10 catches, 104 yards, and, of course, touchdown. He's been the, probably the most consistent receiver this year. Mark Cooper, yeah, he's their best player. 51-yard touchdown um, to um, what it's called, tie up the game. Defensively, JOK, six tackles, a sack, and an interception. Not too shabby. Outside of that, though, all their corners did a really good job. I mean, there's really nothing to complain about. They didn't set the edge great. Like, again, Miles Garrett really hasn't played his best football since really week 12. So, with that, uh, actually even week 11. With that all said, though, Dustin Hopkins should be a first-team All-Pro. He's been unbelievable this year. Team stats, though, the Browns had 317 yards total offense. Again, most of that was through the air. But they were able to get um, um, out gained by a good amount in that um, category. 3-3 turnover ratio, though. Kind of told you the difference. Um... And yeah, again, third down was pretty bad too. And oh yeah, if you're asking, uh, Darnell Mooney, Darnell Mooney. Yeah, yeah, I'll talk about him now. Okay, Darnell Mooney didn't get open the whole game. He has the one shot to make the play of the game, and what does he do? He drops. He's like, oh, it would have been great if I caught it. Well, no crap, you should have caught the freaking football, bro. Yeah, of course, he was laying on the ground, could have caught that Hail Mary. There's just nothing you can say about that. I mean, he's not good. He, he's really fallen off since that 2021 season where he was the number one receiver, but... Yeah, again, uh, Darnell Mooney, uh, I'm not too mad about you, bro. It was one game, but still, you should have caught that ball. That's all I got for this game, guys. Time for the keys to game grades. All right, with the Bears, Justin Fields did throw for over 70 yards. He did have a touchdown. He didn't take seven sacks. And they did triple Miles Garrett and took him kind of out of the game. Offensively, again, I won't say they did everything right, but they did do a decent job overall. 
Again, they did have some bad plays. Again, the scheme was, I mean, not the scheme, what am I saying? The play calling was a little questionable at times, too. But offensively, I'll probably give them two minuses. That wasn't the worst team. Again, 10 points isn't great, but, like, they could have been a lot worse. Defensively, no crazy, you know, I'm probably going to give them three minuses now that I think about it. But defensively, um, they did basically everything right outside of giving up a couple big plays, which is why I'll give them two minuses. But honestly, this Bears defense didn't play too bad. And the Bears actually probably did enough to win this football game, all things said. But obviously, they choked cost at the lead, so that's not great. Honestly, yeah, three minuses. The Bears did not bring their um, A game, but they brought a decent game um, into Chicago, uh, into what is called Cleveland. And, yeah, they lost because they're the Bears. Now let's get the Browns. All right, Browns offense. Elijah Moore was not a part of the game. Amari Cooper was. Obviously, David Njoku had a massive game, not against the run. And, uh, yeah, Jerome Ford was not part of that offense. But Browns offensively, big plays, interceptions. It's not very sustainable, but it worked out okay. I don't know, two pluses. Oh, uh, no, three pluses. Joe Fuck, was pretty, pretty clutch. Defensively, though, um, yeah, pretty decent game. Three pluses. Again, the Browns overall played an okay game. Again, they did not deserve to win this football game, all things said. Because the, the uh, Bears did not play for most of this thing, but obviously they did come back. They're a gutsy football team, and yeah, that's why Kevin Stavansky could win Coach of the Year. Of course, they have some big games next um, uh, coming up, but yeah, they, it, it really rides up probably next week to get that 10 win mark. So all I got for the Browns, time for the Giants and Saints. He has some playoff hopes for either shattered or continued to rise in this game. Gets things started. We are underway in the dome. As the rate over 100 has not thrown an interception. And Waller Go! in his first play. Missed the last five games due to injury. DeVito rolling right. Now he throws. Oh, and Barkley makes the catch. Oops. Yard attempt as career long as 57. Hit the game winner on Monday. And this one is good. Warren. Carr on third down, steps up, throws, end zone, touchdown, Keith Kirkwood. Third down at 12, Giants need the 34-yard line for a first down, and they get it. First down and more, Darren Waller. Olszewski will place it down from the left hand. The punter, Dillon, from 40 yards out, Dillon's kick is good. Explosive dynamic wide receiver. <laughs> Car looking, now throws, end zone, touchdown, Jawan Johnson. From the left hash, Headley places it down, and Groupie's kick is straight through. Jamal Williams in the backfield, Car end zone, touchdown, Jimmy Graham, three games in a row. As DeVito throws, pass incomplete, no flags, he was looking for Jalen Hyatt. Went on Sunday. Saints did not allow a touchdown last week. They have not allowed a touchdown today. DeVito with loads of time, and it is complete in Saints territory. Still by the defensive front. Fourth down and 10. DeVito steps away from the pressure, chased by Vaughn, who throws. Out of the playoff race with a 24 to 6 controlling win, they move to 7 and 7 and really have their playoff chances reside on Thursday night where they have to go into LA and knock off the Rams, which they could very well do. They've been playing pretty solid football the past two weeks, all things said. Offensively, obviously, they were a lot better this week than last week, but their defense has not given up a touchdown since what was it? Wait, who they played in week third? Oh, oh, probably against the yeah, against the Falcons. So, yeah, since then, no way, who they played week 13? Um, let me think. Yeah, it was week 13. What am I saying? I just blanked on that. Either way, though, um, yeah, the Giants, they got to go on Christmas Day to Philly. That'll probably be ugly. Either way, Tommy DeVito, he looked like a backup in this game. Under pressure, he really struggled, but he took like five, six sacks. The offensive line obviously wasn't going to do anything. You should have known that coming into the game, but yeah. Uh, Saquon had his worst game of the year. Nine carries, only 14 yards. Tyrod Taylor was okay when he came in a couple times. Um, Tommy DeVito ran a couple times, though. Darius Slayton actually did do a good job, in my opinion. Four catches, 60 the yards. Darren Waller was, I guess, back. Nothing much more than that, though, and obviously Saquon, um, Saquon had that one big catch. But outside of that, this offense obviously was stuck in the mud and really struggled against that Saints pass rush. Eventually, um, oh, what the hell was that? But either way, um, some big, like, Aishan Robinson was really the only guy actually stopping the run. Jason Pinnock was not good in coverage, despite him having eight tackles and a sack. Um, no one really stepped up in this game. The secondary did a meh job. This defense was just mediocre at best. Uh, and actually, Jamie Dillon hit that field goal. Um, the, for the Saints, though, um... Uh, what is called? Derek Carr was pretty good, 23-28, 2 18 three touchdowns. He really didn't have much trouble finding his receivers and doing much after that. Al Kamara had a hard run, 66 yards. Jamal Williams got his couple carries. 
Alvin Kamara also led him in receiving. Jawan John, um, Johnson got a touchdown. None of the receivers did anything. Jimmy Graham, Keith Kirk, Kirkwood first. I think that's actually his first touchdown since 2018. I don't know how the heck he's, yeah. Of course, you know Keith Kirkwood, um, as, as a rookie, that was really his only time actually like playing as a player. Yeah, that's his first touchdown since 2018. He's back on the Saints. Uh, he's actually been a lot better. So, yeah, that's cool. Again, okay, yeah, he, he's been on a lot of different teams, but that's really cool. He's actually back in the league. Uh, either way, defensively, Tano Caspigan, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he was massive, had six tackles, three sacks. It wasn't all him, but he had some, like, a couple of his sacks were, like, legit sacks. Demar Davis also ate, um, ten tackles and a sack off the blitz. Brian Breezy had two sacks, legit sacks also from Distrip. Bowl rushes. Kyle Granderson had a really nice, what is it called, uh, two, uh, two shock move, basically, where he just swatted down, um, I think it was Matt Pert, someone's arms, and he got a sack. Uh, and yeah, this defense, uh, again, the secondary really had a pretty easy day. They didn't have to do much in coverage. But either way, team stats. Uh, the Giants had under 200. The Saints nearly had 300. Not much there. They were pretty solid on the third down, 50%. The Giants really struggled. One out of every eight. That was like 12.5%. Neither team turned on the football. Again, it was just the fact that, again, the Gi both um, teams' um, lines were a lot better. Like The, Gi the Saints' offensive line, um, line was a lot better than the Giants'. That's probably what made the difference in this one. Time to the keys to the game grades. All right, for the Giants, Tommy Vito success. No, they did not do that. Well, obviously, Saquon got shut down. This Giants offense struggled big time. And it's really, like, honestly, probably um, ominous of how their season's gone. So, or not ominous. What am I saying? Kind of, I guess. Whatever. Gi Giants, the offense, um, probably six minuses. I mean, they may they maybe had one good drive the whole game. It was rough. Defensively, though, Kayvon Thibodeau wasn't really any part of the game. They did not give up 20 in the first half. I guess that was a good thing. And, no, they didn't do that either. No storybook crap. The Giants simply got their butts kicked. Well, not butts kicked, but almost. I'll probably give them four minuses. Uh, again, they were bad on third down, but, again, they've really limited Derek Carr in those deep throws, which I guess was good. No, you know, five minuses. All right for the Giants, time for the Saints. All right for the Saints, 300-plus yards of total offense. They might have got that. Oh, no, I think they did. 25 was touches out for Alvin Kamara. He had somewhere similar to that. Obviously, Chris Olave with a bounce back game. He didn't do that, but obviously, Alvin Kamara did get the football. And this offense did exactly what they asked him to. I don't know. Two pluses. They were okay. Defensively, Cam Jordan strip sack. There's really nothing they did wrong, per se. I'll probably give them, I don't know, seven pluses. They play like that against the Rams. They're winning that game. Time for the Falcons and Panthers. Charlotte. I think it's different now because there's four games left. This is do or die. Minutes, Pitch to Robinson. Plenty of time. Little throwback. That's a good throw. He finds Janu Smith, who's had some big touchdowns in his career, and he just won against the Vikings earlier. Little creativity for Cordero Patterson, and he just lunges in. We range. There's Thielen right there. That's the third down target. That's where Bryce Young was looking. They had him bracketed. Nothing downfield. And a good play to come back. 34-yard try here for Pinheiro. If he makes it, watch the reaction. Let's see. That's good. Yeah. Be about a 54-yarder from here. So they're going to go for it on fourth and seven. Let's see where they mark him. Now Young off the play action. Had to plant his foot, take off, and stayed on his feet. And Bryce Young with an excellent run. Here's Bijan Robinson, and he lost the football! It belongs to Carolina inside the Atlanta 25! Bangs that through. Down the line of scrimmage. Here comes Ritter, he was just able to get away from the pressure, but he throws a pass! Taken away by Xavier Woods! Now they just get the snap off. Bryce Young out route, Jonathan Mingo! Rescued that ball inside the Atlanta 45. Sent. We'll try to boot the Panthers to a win and deliver a huge blow to the playoff hopes of the Falcons and give Chris Tabor his first win as an NFL head coach. That was week 13. What am I saying? I just blanked on that. Either way, though, um, yeah, the Giants, they got to go on Christmas Day to Philly. That'll probably be ugly. Either way, Tommy DeVito, he looked like a backup in this game under pressure. He really struggled, but he took like five, six sacks. The offensive line obviously wasn't going to do anything. You should have known that coming into the game, but yeah. Uh, Saquon had his worst game of the year. Nine carries, only 14 yards. Tyrod Taylor was okay when he came in a couple times. Um, Tommy DeVito ran a couple times, though. Darius Slade actually did do a good job, in my opinion. Four catches, 63 yards. Darren Waller was, I guess, back. Nothing much more than that, though. And obviously, Saquon, um, Saquon had that one big catch. But outside of that, this offense obviously was stuck in the mud and really struggled against that Saints pass rush. Eventually, 
Um, oh, what the hell was that? But either way, um, some big, like, Aisha Robinson was really the only guy actually stopping the run. Jason Pinnock was not good in coverage, despite having eight tackles and a sack. Um, no one really stepped up in this game. The secondary did a meh job. This defense was just mediocre at best. Uh, and actually, Jamie Dillon hit that field goal. Um, the, for the Saints, though, um, uh, what is it called? Derek Carr was pretty good, 23-28. 2 3 18 3 touchdowns. He really didn't have much trouble finding his receivers and doing much after that. Al Kamara had a hard run 66 yards. Jamal Williams got a couple carries. Al Kamara also led him with the receiving. Jawan John, um, Johnson got a touchdown. None of the receivers did anything. Jimmy Graham, Keith Kirk, Kirkwood, first. I think that's actually his first touchdown since 2018. I don't know how the heck he's. Yeah. Of course, you know Keith Kirkwood, um, as, as a rookie, that was really his only time actually like playing as a player. Yeah, that's his first touchdown since 2018. He's back on the Saints. He's actually got a lot better, so, yeah, that's cool. Again, yeah, he, he's been on a lot of different teams, but that's really cool. He's actually back in the league. Uh, but either way, defensively, Tano Caspagon, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he was massive, had six tackles, three sacks. It wasn't all him, but he had some, like, a couple of his sacks, like, legit sacks. Demario Davis also ate um, ten tackles and a sack off the blitz. Brian Breezy had two sacks, legit sacks also from just strip bull rushes. Kyle Granderson had a really nice, what is it called, uh... Two, uh, two shock move, basically, where he just swatted down, um, I think it was Matt Pert, someone's arms, and he got a sack, uh, and yeah, this defense, uh, again, the secondary really had a pretty easy day, they didn't have to do much in coverage, but either way, team stats, uh, the Giants had under 200, the Saints nearly had 300, not much there, they were pretty solid on third down, 50%, the Giants really struggled, one out of every eight, that was like 12 and a half percent, Neither team turned on the football again. It was just the fact that again the Giants, both um, teams on um, lines were a lot better. Like the Giants, the Saints' offensive line, um, line was a lot better than the Giants. That's probably what made the difference in this one. Time for the keys to the game grades. I mean, what did they do right after that first quarter, or actually second in the second quarter? Whatever. Um, there's nothing good they did. Uh, ten minus, no nine minuses. They they were pretty bad defensively. If you don't outscore the Panthers' defense, you're frauds. I mean, they as a defense. I mean, they kind of did. I guess they didn't give a touchdown. Um. They, they were okay, I guess, but yeah, that last drive was kind of inexcusable. Time for the Panthers. They did exactly what I asked them to do with Bryce Young. Like, he did do that. They did not have 200 uh, yards rushing, but they did do a decent job there. And actually, they were down by less than six. They were, only down, they were down by seven. Or no, wait, they weren't. They set the thing was four points. They came back, though, so uh, Panthers offense didn't score a touchdown. Still won the game. Uh, I'll probably give them a plus because, again, Bryce Young game when he drives. Defensively, though. Simply out the interior, um, defense alignment and run stunts, and uh, they did a really good job there, and they set the edge really well. They did, they did force a big turnover as well. Defensively, there's a pretty good chance that was one of their best games of the season. I'll probably give them six pluses. Good job, Panthers. Time for the national game. Chiefs and Patriots here with the highlights. On the road, trying to get a win to clinch. These two great franchises face off today. Mahomes and the defending champ. Opportunity to make those game-changing plays, and they haven't done it. Mahomes looking deep on the first play, and he drops it in for Noah Gray. Games where he comes after him. Oh, my goodness. A unicorn. 41 yarder for the old nope. Milton Terrapin is no good. Top seed on second and four. Same look that began the drive, and it's a screen to Edwards Hilaire, who's got a convoy into Patriots territory. An interesting look here to Rex Snap to McKinnon, then it's Rice covered underneath. Touchdown. Andy Reid strikes right there. Far today, they do so again here. Zappi lofting for Parker. Made the adjustment for a first step and to lose at three and ten. Looking for the the upset here on fourth and one it's play action zappy throws touchdown henry starts his drive with the play action pass over the middle it is intercepted Marte Mapu. Ryland's got this one and the pitch bringing some pressure lets it fly watson has it what a strike from Mahomes. Mahomes into the flats for McKinnon. Jared McKinnon's got a touchdown. He adds to his passing touchdown with a touchdown catch. This one from 29, and the Chiefs get points on the last struggle after the break. Looks to throw. On the move, he's in trouble, and he throws an interception right into the hands of Willie Gay. The Stars on defense for him. Second and goal. Mahomes, first read taken away. Back in the end zone. And it's there. Touchdown, Kansas City. Harrison Bunker right back to from the 24-yard line. Over the middle. Tony juggles, and it's picked by Jelani Tavai. Out of Liberty, 
Hand off for Kevin Harris. He starts through. Kevin Harris is in for the Patriots touchdown. Then four. They'll go for it. Zappy out of his own end zone. Throws incomplete. Dream business with a 27 to 17 double digit win over the Patriots who of course are going to continue continue their tank she's moving nine five snapping that two game losing streak but there were still problems in this one for sure um Mahomes they let him throw you can definitely see that throughout the game three and five yards two touchdowns two picks the running game wasn't really any part of the game plan at all Rasheed Rice stepped up nine for 91 and a touchdown Clyde Edwards Hilaire of course had that huge catch and run also um caught a nice touchdown off of a nice pass from Mahomes in the end zone um, Jared McKinnon also ran, um, caught a touchdown, like, typical his type of touchdown. Travis Kelsey got triple teamed, uh, Noah Gray basically just got absolutely, fit, um, just owned on the interception, and then, of course, Kadarius Tony and Sky Moore, who is not here, I guess. Both those guys suck, um, should be benched, simple as that with those two. Bench them, please, you know, you really don't have any other options. Defensively, um... I guess they were okay. I really don't have much to say because, again, it's the Patriots. So, like, yeah, they got good pressure. They got a pick from Willie Gay. I mean, they did exa exactly what I guess they were asked to. Outside of the run defense, which I did think it was a little shaky. Again, the run fits weren't, and the gap control definitely wasn't as good as they usually are. And the tackling was a little less aggressive, but overall, they were decent. For the Patriots, Bailey Zappi was okay. 180 yards, touchdown, and pick. Running game was, yeah, it was there. Um, of course, Kevin Harris had that nice touchdown run. Counter Henry also caught a touchdown. They had one nice touchdown drive. Outside of that, no one did much, as expected. Defensively, though, again, they got some decent pressure on Mahomes, especially, um, where is he? Christian Barmore, he had a really good big game. Jelani Tavai also had an interception. Um, again, very opportunistic. Martin Mapu also had a pick. Yeah, defensively, it was a, it was a pretty good, uh, group there, for sure. Um, for the team, oh, yeah, Chad Ryan, I think, but yeah, they both missed field goal. Here's Mucker missed his first kick of the year. And then, for what it's called, for team stats, um, pitch, um, Chiefs had uh, over 100 more yards. Uh, they also had the ball a little longer despite their two picks. And, um, yeah, that's kind of what happened, guys. Chiefs will play the, um, the, 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 they're playing, oh, they're playing the Raiders next week at home on Christmas Day. Patriots will play the Broncos in Denver trying to spoil their party. That's what they got there. Time to keys to the game grades. Bar from Kansas City, you're gonna lose. They didn't lose, so, um, I don't know. Offensively, again, there were still issues. I'll give them a plus, though, because that offense looked a lot more explosive like they should. Let Mahomes take over the offense, guys. That's the best way to do it. Defensively, no way Bailey Zapp is gonna cook. No, he didn't. Chris Jones taking bound bet blocked better. A little bit. Definitely not in the red zone, though. In short, um, cuts from, uh, what it's called, George Coffis, um, for his previous power. He actually had a really nice hezzy, um, hezzy move, so I'm gonna be okay with that, as long as it doesn't, he doesn't use it too much, because then he can get killed against the run, so... With that all said, defensively, they did what they were supposed to. I'll give them two pluses. Again, they were a little concerning against the run, but outside of that, this defense did exactly what they were supposed to. Three pluses for the, um, two pluses for the Chiefs defense. Now let's talk about the Patriots. Offensively, they didn't put up 20, and they lost, so I guess that's good. I'll probably give them two pluses for that. Defensively, though, John and Jones, Marcus Jones, and Jason Jackson, they did not do that, but they did get um, a couple picks. First half shutout, no, they get, um, made it tough on them, though. And Patrick Mahomes did have to throw Terry, uh, what is it called? Yeah, and then, of course, Canary's Tony did not do anything, so I guess that's good. Uh, I don't know, five pluses for this defense. Good job. That's all I got for the Patriots, guys. Time for the um, national game. Yeah, Justin Dolphins. Yeah, this was about as bad as you'd expect it to be. Here we go. Here are the highlights. Hey, big AFC East game. That's Zach Wilson, the Jets, visiting in Miami. Zach's coming off his best game of the year last week. Two touchdowns over 300 yards. We'll see if he can do it again today. To a tongue of Iloa. Which is it. Certainly sharp with his first throw. Here he is on first down, running. And the ball comes out. That's a fumble. And it's recovered at the one-yard line. Third straight time to Mostert. There's the Miami record. The 19th touchdown of the season. Field goal try is good. By Morstead. Dolphins begin at their own 40. Going deep. Going deep. Right there. What a perfect pass. Behind Tua is in the gun. Why not give it to him? Go wide. No one's going to touch him. Touchdown, Miami. 27 yards and good. Off the penalty. Play action. Bro. Deep ball. Going deep, and it's intercepted at the one-yard line. Brandon Jones has it. A little concern. 35 yards by Sanders. And he's three for three. One second to snap it. Simeon does on third and 13. Ball stripped out of his hands and swallowed up right away by Bradley Chubb. When it's 30 nothing. Here's the pass. Looking at a pick here. And it is. Intercepted for the second time. Brandon Jones has an interception. And the Dolphins.
to send the Jets back to flashbacks of Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold seeing ghosts as they blow them out 30 to nothing. Holy crap. Dolphins move to 10 and 4, and again, they needed the win, so they have a shot at winning the division, which we'll get to when we get to the Bills. But the Dolphins, yeah, they've got a really hard stretch, a brutal stretch to end of the season. Next week, they got to host the Cowboys. They win that game. We can start talking. But, of course, they get the Ravens the next week, battle for the number one seed. Um, that's just, just a massive game. Of course, they're in Baltimore. And then they play against the Bills for what could be for the division in Week 18. But, yeah, this is a game that the Dolphins need to just show up in and do their thing because next week and the week after that and the week after that, it's all playoff games for these guys. Um, Trevor Simeon was was Trevor Simeon as the Jets missed the playoffs. Um, he had two like pathetic interceptions. Zach Wilson got hurt. Um, this whole offense, like... Now, this is probably the worst offensive performance of the year type of stuff. Holy crap, were they bad. There's nothing good you can say. Like, that that's how bad they were. There's nothing. That's how, again, it, it's just, <laughs> holy crap. Defensively, though, um, I guess they were okay. Their coverage was a little inconsistent on the back end, especially at safety. They definitely were tested in this game. The linebackers did do a decent job at, um, what is it called? Um, at, um what is it called? Uh, plugging holes. But outside of that, they did give up some really bad um, plays pre-snap where they just got absolutely faked out, which is okay, because, again, some of the stuff the Dolphins are running, like, anyone we get faked out by, but, Salma Thomas did have a nice sack, um, and outside of that, this event just kind of got duped. For the Dolphins, though, two was really good, 21 of 24, 224 touchdown, then I actually was taken out, running game was not anything great, but Reed Mostert did have two touchdowns, breaking the all-time, um, what is called Miami record with 18 rushing touchdowns and 20 total touchdowns in a single season, tied with TMC for the most in the league, Jalen Waddle, of course, without Tyreek Hill, he showed up, 8 for 142, showed out with 8 for 142 in the touchdown, also, that was a 60-yard bomb, defensively, um, uh, Brandon Jones caught two picks that I think probably a below average or average high schooler would have caught, Duke Riley had half sack, Bradley Chubb had three sacks and seven total tackles, big day for him, and yeah, this defense was dominant, no one had a bad game, Team stats, though. Um, Dolphins had only 300 yards of offense, but obviously the Dolphins just had a measly 103. Uh, they had a ball a lot longer. The uh, Jets turned it over four times. Yeah, there's really nothing good you can say about the Jets in this game, guys. Of course, they got a tank bowl game against the Commanders next week at home. Dolphins, I, I, I've already said, they got to play Dallas next week. That'll be very interesting. Time for the keys to the game grades. All right, Jets offensively, I might give them 15 minuses. You know what? I will, because that, that, that's how bad it was. Yep, no. The defensively, though, um, Brady Nichols, no, he didn't. Um, they did do a decent job, though, at holding the Dolphins down. Again, like, when it comes from drive to drive. But when it came down to it, they gave a couple big plays. They could not stop the Jet Dolphins in the red zone. It was rough. Uh, I'll give them four minuses for that. Now let's look at the Dolphins. Dolphins, good job of controlling the clock. Getting some explosive plays. Raheem Mostert did not have 100 total yards, but he did have a decent job. Do a decent job. They only scored three touchdowns. Offensively, I'll give them four pluses. I like what I saw. Defensively, there, there's no, I'm not going to give them, I'll probably give them 10 pluses. Again, they were winning pre-snap no matter what was going to happen. Like, it really didn't matter what the heck they actually did. Because, again, they had, their guys were better than the Jets guys. And more importantly, like, pre-snap guys, like, it, it was really bad. The Jets didn't have one situation where they actually had a chance to succeed. Unless a guy would make a crazy play, which, of course, did not happen. So, for the Dolphins defense, great performance. Again, enjoy the shout-out. But your next three games are going to be brutal. And, obviously, you're going to have to win these next two if you um, want to avoid, um, a likely a game for the division week 18 because trust me you don't want to be another wild card team because you, you could actually honestly would they there's a shot they could be the freaking sixth team in the wild card race that's crazy but yeah the, the, they should try to look ahead instead of like thinking about how bad they could be or how far they can get behind because this is a very dangerous spot for the dolphins but great win guys with all that said though now let's get into the early afternoon well, late afternoon window here are the commanders and rams yeah this game got close Week 15 of the National Football League finds us in Southern California. Significant game when it comes to the NFC playoff. Cooper Cup in motion. Big week last week for Cup. They hand it off to Williams. Williams trying to get to the edge to the right. Oh, he makes a bad miss to his left. He's inside commander's territory. In the execution of the play. Sometimes the defense can get you. And that time, there were too many people in coverage. On the one, Howell moves the pocket and is old. Oh, Knocked in complete. Nick Hampton. Not Deuces don't go out easy. Two of three on third down so far. He's just going to throw this one. Sidelines. Oh, and he can't he keep his feet in. They said he did. He back since Gurley to be that way. Look at that stop and then that little jet to the left. He fumbled the football. And the commanders fall on top of it. Can Davis Allen in motion. They give it to Williams. Williams goes to the goal line. He's in. Williams, a little dump off from Stafford. Stafford watches Williams fumble again. It's picked up by the Commanders. St. Juice knocked it loose. Oh,
get a turnover, have an opportunity before half, and you go backwards. What oh, the heck? Now. It's rolling on the turf. Way falls on top of it, and it gets even worse. Goal attack, good snap, good hold, and the kick is good. Motion, Stafford off the play fake. Looking long for Cooper Cup. He's wide open. He's got it in stride. He's going to go in. 62 yards. It's a background with him on a play baseball North Carolina. with Matthew Stafford. Got a credit to to Hudson. Hudson's had a big day for the Commanders. Stafford going to the end zone for Robinson. He's got him. There's a trouble. Goes on the run and a one-handed a grab. An interception. John Johnson. Now it's Ward on IR. Good snap, good hole. Kick is on its way and it is no good. By the time he finished, he was a game changer. He said people wanted all their quarterbacks Brissett from McLaurin, and he's got it. Touchdown, Commanders. Under five minutes to play. Down two scores. Brissett looking for McLaurin. He's got it in stride. And McLaurin is dragged down near the goal line. On fourth and goal. He doesn't go to McLaurin, but he goes to his other receiver, Samuel. When you don't go for two the next time, that's the same percentage-wise as kicking the extra point. That's why they say to go for it. Well, low snap, and it's blocked. Picked up by the Rams. Take them down. Like a mudslide. Oh, when I do and the Rams take care of the Commanders with a 28-20 game in which they were up by 20 to nothing. And as a result of a bunch of things going their way, they are somehow in the seventh seed right now after, of course, being 3-6. and six. They've won four of their last five games, and they have a massive game for in their playoff hopes against the Saints on Thursday night. If they're able to win that game, that's a big, 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 big if. Then they have a very good shot at making it. Again, that's a very good shot, but it's not a great, it's not a perfect shot because, of course, they got the Niners in Week 18, which could be like again deciding the Rams season. So there's a lot going into this, but again, they are a game up on all the other teams except again the Saints are right on their freaking butts. They need to win that game on Thursday. There, there's no way around it. If they lose that game, they're not in the playoffs. They're done. Commanders, 4-10. and ten, um, They're tanking. They've lost five in a row. But Jacoby Brissett did look good when he came into the game. Uh, kind of heroic, to be completely honest there. And they cut it to an eight-point game. The Rams are up 20 nothing at the, um, playing this game. I'm a little worried, though, because they're up, uh, I'm more than a little worried. Because the Rams did not finish this game out well at all. And they don't finish. Again, if they're not able to go into um, that game against the Saints and punch them in the mouth. And also finish a game. The Rams are going to have to finish some of these games down the stretch. So, again, they can play as well as they want to in the first couple quarters. But they need to finish these games. Because if they don't, they're going to lose. Um, Sam Howell, again, was bad when he was in the game. 11-26, one, uh, 102 touchdown interception. Touchdown was pretty nice in that one drive. But Jacoby Brissett looked a lot better. They're saying that he's Sam Howell's quarterback. But uh, not so much. That was by far Sam Howell's worst game of the season. He will by, probably be their starting quarterback next year. He should be, though. Because he's still young. He's still growing. Even this game was struggled, like, again, the last two games he's really struggled, to be completely honest. But, receiving-wise, Terry McLaurin, 6 for 141 on a touchdown. He exploded in that fourth quarter. Best game of his season, Curtis Samuel also caught two touchdowns. Yeah, this offense looked a lot better in that fourth quarter, but outside of that, they got absolutely mauled. Like, they only scored seven points for three quarters, guys. Um, defensively, they didn't do a good job, honestly, on third down. They, I, I'm going to say, like, obviously you could see why they were one of the worst defenses in the league if you watched this game. But at the same point, they did do a good job of holding the Rams in those last couple drives. The Stars did show up, even though they don't have many. Kaliki Hudson made some big tackles. Jertavis Martin had a sack. Deron Payne had two sacks. Jonathan Allen really got triple teamed at some points, too. But again, they did do a good job of shutting down the Rams in that fourth quarter. But outside of that, yeah, this was not the best performance by them, of course. But yeah. Um, for the Rams, uh, they, it was, I would say it was, it was weird because Matt Stafford did exactly what you needed him to do. Of course, he had that huge, oh, uh, what is it called? Throw on the sideline to Tyler Higby. Of course, with that bomb to Cooper Cup. There's really nothing bad you can say about him. Kyron Williams getting two bad fumbles that probably would have made the Rams win by like 40, 30 freaking points. <laughs> If he didn't fumble those two times, damn. But outside of that, Tower Nose was massive. Seven, 27 carries, 151, two total yards. He had, um, what is it called? Oh, damn. He had freaking 33, what is it, 32 touches? Damn. I don't know why they needed him to do that, though. That was my question. They should have honestly gave more carries to Royce Freeman, in my opinion. He was meh. Cooper Cup uh, is back to his old self. Eight catches, 111 yards. Of course, that 62-yard touchdown. Puka was decent, 5 for 50. Demarcus Robinson also had a touchdown. And Tyler Higby got four catches for 36 yards. Defensively, Quentin Lake was bad in the red zone, but outside of that, he was really good. Ernest Jones had a sack. Uh, Darren Kendrick's got to be better. Again, when Akella Leatherspoon was out, he, they, he just got absolutely cooked. 
He was terrible in this game. That's just a simple truth about it. John Johnson did have an interception, three tackles. Though defensively, they again they kind of collapsed. But again, Lucas Haversick missing that field goal did not help. The Rams again should they should have put up a lot more than they did in this game. But again, they didn't finish it. Again, they got to be able to finish these games. Team stats: 445 total yards. Commanders nearly at 300. The Rams had nearly 200 yards for like what is it, the third, three out of four weeks, something like that. Um, Rams had again two turnovers. Though. Commanders only had one. They had the ball a lot longer though. And again, they should have won the game. They were really good on third down in this one. It, it, again, it just comes down to that. Time for the keys to the game grades. All right, for this commander's offense, Sam, again, he was terrible, so that's how I'll put it. But they did they did come back, so for that reason, I'll give them a plus. They did try. Defensively, the interior of the D-line was good. They did not shut down Kyrie, Kyrie Williams, but they did have, of course, a couple fluky turnovers. For that reason, defensively, I will give them three minuses. You could see, honestly, probably four minuses. You could see why they're not in any games. It's because their defense is trash. But at least they did force a couple of turnovers and did come up pretty big in those on those last two drives in the fourth quarter. Now let's look at the Rams. Rams offensively, they did make a couple of mistakes and actually they did not finish this football game. But outside of that, like again, when it can't come down to it, they did do a decent job. I'll probably give them two pluses. Defensively, they were good for most of the game. Akello obviously getting injured was a big um um out there. But yeah, actually Aaron Donald did not did not have five sacks. They didn't get that much pressure, but it was a decent. But on um, defensively, I'll probably give them I don't know. Two minuses again. They kind of just fell apart in that fourth quarter. And next week, if they do that, they will lose. So um, the defense still has a lot of concerns, and they got to figure those out. But they are still a decent group, though, because at their highs, they're really good. Can they be that? We'll have to wait and see. Time for the Niners and Cardinals here with the highlights. It's week 15, and the NFL on CBS is live from Glendale, Arizona. Today, that is a new Cardinals tight end record. Protection holds up. Murray hangs in there. Deep shot. Murray. He's got McBride. Wrestle down. Long count for Murray. It's a running play to Connor. Comes through for the touchdown. The field, all of them firing together. McCaffrey gets a breather. Mason is in. Wide open. Purdy to Samuel. Walk in. Touchdown. Murray. Step. Deliver. It's intercepted. San Francisco gets the pick. It's Ward. High kicking it. All the way. Touchdown. 62. Puts the leg into it. And knocks it through. Gillikin will hold it. The snap from Brewer. And he knocks it through. 49ers trying to add to their lead. Purdy. Fires over the middle. Touchdown. McCaffrey. And Purdy with a dime. McCaffrey in motion, Purdy, hot read, gets rid of it, Kittle, first down, Kittle still going, brought down, been better opportunities led by Purdy, curls out of trouble, downfield, wide open, McCaffrey gets up to run with it, for the touchdown, and off to Connor, big hole, Connor rips through it, and a huge gain for Connor, from behind. Already made a couple of them. This is a 28-yard chip shot, and he nails it. Out of the pistol. McCaffrey knifes in. Touchdown, 49ers. Absolutely. Give it to De Mercado. And somebody goes <laughs> on this drive has been a run until this throw and it's Devo Samuel touchdown San Francisco sometimes break routes find open space and I'll find you you go ahead and do it you've earned that right Murray intercepted second one of the day for Charvarius Ward he's got it third and goal Murray thrown off his back foot it's caught by Higgins for the touchdown. And Niners clinch the NFC West as they make it back-to-back -back years making it. And if the Eagles lose tonight, that means the Niners will have a very good shot at getting that number one seed. Of course, they are 11-3. Um, They have a huge game. Of course, they're six, winners of six straight Christmas night, the game of the year at home against the Ravens. That ain't going to be an easy game, but if they're able to win that one, guys, one seed is very much a possibility, and obviously it still is right now. 45 points, though. Yeah, they put up a hurting on the Cardinals. The Car Cardinals, at least, like, they tried. They, it wasn't a complete blowout. But they fall to 3-11, and, 11, and um, I mean, they, they've been pretty competitive, and they've, like, it hasn't been a complete crapshoot this year. Uh, 
Brock Purdy, 16 of 25, 242, four touchdowns. He had some plays that were utterly ridiculous. Obviously, Sam Darnold came at the end of the game. CFC, 115 yards, touchdown on the ground, continues his MVP-like season. He also had five catches for 72 yards and two touchdowns to lead him there. 45 yards and a five-yard touchdown grab. George Kittle, of course, had that huge catch and run play. Debo was wide open every time he got the football. Brandon Ayuk made some big third down catches. Yeah, offensively, it was a complete clinic. Defensively, though, um, obviously, Trevor scored three total tackles, a pick six, and another interception. He was really good. The pressure actually wasn't even that good this game. I really liked the way the Cardinals' offensive line um, had a, a nice kickback for Kyler to obviously drop back deep and throw the football. Where he did struggle a little bit, but obviously, the corner, the safeties in this game were very good for, for the what is called Niners, they didn't give anything over the top of them outside of that one play of Trey McBride. Th this defense was pretty decent, but they had, their, they had their issues in this one. Jake Moody also had his field goal. Cardinals, though, Kyle Murray, first two picks, but he did have 211 yards and touchdown. Also was decent over the middle, again, off play action, some big plays. This offense was, uh, best word to use, was explosive. James Conner and Amari DiMarcano both had long runs. Of course, Amari DiMarcano went for a touchdown, 51-yarder. Kyler was also pretty good on the ground, 6 for 49. Uh, receiving, though, Trey McBride is their franchise 10. 10 catches, 102 yards. Elijah Higgins was the rec lead receiver, of course, with no one out else out there. Ronald Moore was basically double and triple teamed in every play, too. He had a touchdown. Defensively, um, they were okay. Uh, again, they got they kind of got boat raced at some points, as expected, though. They're just one of the least talented defenses in the league. Dennis Guard did do a really good job of setting the edge, though. Honestly, they were decent. They did an okay job. They were somewhat competitive. On uh, team stats, though, obviously, the, both teams had over 400 yards. It was an offensive game, for sure. Uh, the Cardinals getting two picks uh, were big in this one. And they also had the ball a little longer, but I'll be honest, what it came down to was the fact that, again, when the Cardinals had the chance to come back, they just couldn't get back into the game, and then obviously it got away from, it, from them late. But they did compete, and that's really all you could ask from, for, for them. They got the Bears next week. That'll be a very interesting game. Time for the keys to the game grades. All right, for the Niners, I um, have, um, have to get up by 17-plus early. They did not They did get an early lead after the first Cardinals touchdown. Blech, lead. Uh, CFC was another monster game. He was pretty good. And obviously, maybe win by 50. No, but they did win by 16. So, offensively, took care of business. They won the NFC West. But, honestly, we'll see how really, really good they are, even though they're the best team in the league next week. Because, again, it's Christmas night. That game will be so freaking good. But with all that said, I will probably give them, I don't know, six pluses. They, they were rolling. There really wasn't a part of this game where they were that bad. Niners defense, no bet. Kyler BS. He did do a little bit BS on them, but they did shut down a lot of those run gaps to the B gap. C gap and A gap, though, were all wide open in this one. They didn't have to play in Marquise Brown because he did not play this one. They did give him a couple big plays, which might be concerning going to next week. They did have a pick six, though. I'll honestly probably give them a minus defensively, though, because I don't think they actually played their, even close to their best game. They got beat on some of those plays, too. Time for the Cardinals. Cardinals offensively, obviously they competed, and I said, yeah, Kyler Jets put up 30 and have a pretty good game on um, downfield. He was decent there. Some of the throws obviously weren't working out for him, but it was okay. Yeah, he, he was pretty good. Not late, though, because, again, the game wasn't super competitive there. Offensively, though, I will probably give them two pluses. Again, they got some bad crucial turnovers, but they ran the ball really well, and the offensive line had a great game. So I'll give them two pluses. Defensively, though, um... It's simply just way too many big plays, and they also were terrible on third down. For that reason, again, you just can't win games like that. I'll probably have to give them four minuses, but at least they did compete towards the end. So all I got for the Cardinals, guys. Time for America's Game of the Week here with the Cowboys and Bills. And oh, baby, guys, the Bills are back, and they're going to the Super Bowl. Welcome to Highmark Stadium here in Orchard Park, New York. It's America's Game of the Week. It's a biggie. The Dallas Cowboys and the Buffalo Bills, and the Cowboys have won the toss there. <laughs> James Cook again on that left side, and this time into Cowboys territory, and still chugging inside the 45. Fans love it. Defensive line. Second and goal. It's Murray, and he is stuffed. I think, maybe not, still going, no signal. Allen, here comes Parsons, runs away, throws on the run, has a man, caught, touchdown, it's Cook. Was put down the kick is perfect the rookie has made all 31 of his field goals has come out for dallas he was injured during that break here's cook breaking tackle still on his feet james cook diving inside the five and he's down to the one the quarterback shove play and that works forget it not even close josh allen is in touchdown buffalo to a 21 point lead passes got it Cook again, why not? James Cook through everyone and he scores again! Prescott throws high and it's intercepted! It's Benford who's got it, takes it, it drives. 
for their sake, hopefully end with a touchdown. Yeah, get it to Lamb on the run, diving, and he's in for the touchdown. Oh, oh, bro, what the hell? Yeah, the Bills, the Bills just took it right to the Cowboys and shoved it right up their arse. Holy bananas. 31 to 10. Cowboys fall at 10 and 4. They're terrible on the road. The Bills, they, they just, they got, they mauled them. Go to in six, second straight win. They go to um, what's called LA next week to face the Chargers on Saturday night, which it means it is a short week, but they got Patriots after that. I'll say it straight up right now, guys. The Bills and the Dolphins in week 18 will be playing for the division, and saying that two weeks ago would have been asinine. That is just crazy. They could <laughs> They could very well go to the Super Bowl and be also in that wild card game. That that it's just it, it's it's unfathomable about two weeks ago you could think about that. But look where they are. Holy crap. Cowboys are here, they're ten and four. Um that was a bad loss. Their number one seed hopes are gone for sure at this point. Uh but I don't know, you got the oh Dolphins next week in Miami. Then you gotta go to Detroit. Then you gotta play Detroit at home. Those two games will be very interesting. And if the Lions are gonna be legit this year, I think that again the cow for the Cowboys, their sake. The Cowboys got to blow them out, so they, again, no one thinks they're legit, but that'll be a very interesting game. They have one more home game. They got to play the Commanders in Week 18, which they'll probably be resting their starters for, because, again, they'll probably be locked into that um, fifth seed. Either way, though, Dak was, I guess, big there. Again, they clinched the playoff spot this week, too. Uh, he, he didn't really have much of a chance at all, because they really didn't have the ball at all in this game, but when he threw the football, he was okay um, in terms of efficiency, but, of course, with that bad interception at the end. Running game got absolutely going in the first, um, what is called first um, drive. After that, though, it was bad. C.D. Lamb had their only touchdown. C.D. Lamb got absolutely shut down. Jake Ferguson was, uh, was at least decent for fantasy. Brandon Cooks only got two targets. Defensively, um, they just got ran down their throat as um, because simply again the Bills' big dudes were better than the Cowboys' little dudes, and and then you could just see it the whole game. They got the ball ran down their throat. Their gap, their gap control was terrible. It really wasn't, again, the, what is it called, run fence. They actually did do, they did do good with that actually all year. It was just the fact that, again, their big, the big, the guys up front got absolutely more like Micah Parsons. Holy crap, he got thrown around. Marquise Bell's really the big guy, though. Again, he's 100, 205 pounds. He got tossed. It was not good. Brandon Aubrey did his field goal, though. For the Bills, uh, Josh Allen throwing 15 passing, um, passes and only 7 completions. In winning this football game is crazy. But again, it was a James Cook show. 179 yards and a touchdown on 25 carries. 7.2 yards per rush. Every other one else ran the ball well, too. It was a complete show for all those dudes. Three rushing touchdowns in the day, too. Obviously, Josh Allen, two total touchdowns. One through the air, one on the ground. Tenth game that this happened this season. That is an NFL record. James Cook also had a touchdown. Through the air, 242 had um, 211 total yard scrimmage yards. The most since, I think, 2010 for the Bills. It was a freaking show. Defensively, though, um, Teron Johnson was really good. Again, they just got after Dak and basically said, win this football game, and they didn't. They're up front. They just completely mauled them. It was great. Their coverage was great. Defensively, the, honestly, that's probably the one. That, yeah, tell you all you want about this Bills um, running game, but um, again, the Bills defense just really stepped up, stepped it up. Again, they had the ball for um, 35 minutes. That was huge. Again, they were a lot um, better on third down because they got into less third downs as well. Um, up front, the Bills were unbelievable in this game. Great job, guys. Again, you get, you get to go to LA next week and smack the Chargers. Here we go, right into the keys of the game, grids. All right, Cowboys offensively again. They just did not keep up with that Cowboy, um, that um, what's called Bills offense. They failed to really find anyone to get the football to consistently in terms of again making plays. Because again, CD Lamb wasn't going to do anything in this game. And again, they didn't really run the football the same rate the Cow Bills did at any um, at any like even close to. So yeah, they got boat raced five minuses. Defensively though. Yeah, you didn't figure it out. As simple as that. Again, if you couldn't figure out how to stop the run, you were going to get your butts kicked, and you did. No James Cook long runs. He had like five or six of them. Yeah. Cowboys defense, not good. Time for the Bills. And obviously the Cowboys, hey, it's probably fifth seed for the second straight year in a freaking divisional round exit. Let's go. But meanwhile, we're Buffalo. Um, what is it called? Uh, yeah, they ran the ball, uh, and they ran the ball even more. Um, ten, uh, no, not ten pluses. I'll give them seven pluses. They have never ran the ball like that. 266 yards on the ground is crazy. Of course, you look at this Bills offense. The reason they haven't run the football even nearly even like in the same like like sentences the um as they did um yesterday was it was simply because again the Bills didn't believe they could run the football. They again the offensive line you can say eh, they don't have the dudes to do it. They don't really try to commit to it. But they, again psychologically the team they, the Bills thought we could not run the football. What happened? They ran the freaking football. Said we can run the football. This is what happens. They're running the ball the rest of the year too. Defensively, that if they do this every single week, which obviously won't happen, but if they're able to. The Bills are gonna go. The Bills are gonna be awesome. That's all I'll put it. Um, 
five bosses. Uh, I'll probably give them six bosses. Again, they did, it did help they weren't on the field as much, but when this defense is fresh and this pass rush can just get going, and the um, secondary is very disciplined, they're not trying to do too much, it's a very good defense. Rasul Douglas and Mann has been unbelievable for this team as well, is in uh, um, off-zone coverage. It, it's great what they're doing for this defense. I think they're even bigger than this offense in this football game. Of course, they ran the ball through in 66 yards, though. So, we have the Bills, guys. Here we're Saturday Night Football. Forget all day. We've been waiting 15 years for Sunday Night Football's return to Jacksonville. In the NFL from 15. And McManus softly upright and no good. From 55, wind is dying down. And McManus is two. Jackson with fake. Switch to the middle. It's intercepted. Show, um, showdown in which, of course, their defense forced, like, I think two or three turnovers. They were really good. 23-7 was the final score. They moved to 11-3. They have won now four in a row. They've got a game, again, it's game of the year against the Niners next week on Christmas night. Um, what is it called? The Jags in their hand. they got to play the bu um, Bucks on the on the road. And they are in complete free fall for what is it called their division. Um, of course, they're all tied up at 8-6. But if they went out, they get the division. So, I mean, kind of guess just do that. But they're in a very tough spot right now. Loses a three in a row, of course, after that 8-3 and three start. For Lamar, though, 14 of 24, 171 yards, touchdown, a pick. Of course, he had some unbelievable throws. He did struggle to actually find his first read, though. He had some times where the guys were wide open. He had at least six seconds um, um, per, um, per attempt to throw, though. He was dropping back and just waiting for guys to um, make, make something happen. Of course, the interception was pretty bad, but the touchdown was also nice. He did a decent job. Of course, they ran the ball down to the Jacks' throat. They really couldn't stop for most of the game. Gus Edwards, 58 yards, touchdown in the most carries. But Keaton Mitchell and Lamar Jackson were both very good. Unfortunately... Justice Hill will be getting a lot more carries because, again, not for him, but because Keaton Mitchell will most likely miss the rest of the season with an ugly knee injury, which really sucks. He's had a phenomenal rookie season for his expe expectations. Isaiah likely five catches, 70 yards touchdown, of course, had the play of the day um, as part of his Lamar Jackson play. Receiving-wise, a bunch of different guys made plays. Again, no one was really that great, though. Again, uh, Odell only had one catch despite having, like, four or five targets. Eventually, like, having Kyle Hamilton in this defense just makes such a big difference. Obviously, they were not great overall in coverage in this game. Again, the corners did struggle a little bit in zone, as well as picking up guys, um, what is it called, over the middle. But, again, the pressure was somewhat decent, and also the fact that, again, they forced a couple um, turnovers were very opportunistic. Four reasons they won this football game, and, of course, Justin Tucker hit three field goals. For the Jags, though, Trevor was okay, 25-43, 264 touchdown. Just some crucial plays where he had to make um, throws he didn't make. Travis E. Jr. didn't do much at all in this game. Zay Jones, who catches 70 yards, touchdown was decent. I mean, 
Some of the plays were good. Again, the count really, uh, he's got to use more of his hands in the red zone now. As simple as that with him. Defensively, though, um, they did a good job. I, there's real, again, they got the ball ran down their throat, but again, it was just their dudes just not winning. Okay, Darius Williams is never going to be able to get on the edge. Trayvon Walker had his best game of his um, season, though, sack. He had like eight, five or eight, six pressures. I mean, maybe even more. Had four total tackles. Um, Josh Allen was also pretty decent. They did a decent job defensively, but again, they just got the ball ran down their throat, and they could not stop the Ravens too well on third down. Again, five to 12, 12 for them. They also had the ball longer, two to one turnover ratio in favor of the uh, Ravens, obviously. Again, both offensive lines weren't great in this game, but obviously, again, the Ravens were just able to come on top because they controlled the ball, um, ball longer and also didn't um, fail to score on four straight um, drives inside the um, opposing th um, team's 40. That is for the Jaguars. Time to the keys to the game grades to wrap this thing up. All right, for Baltimore offensively, don't pull a two-score lead in Duval for the second straight year. They didn't. Lamar was really good. Again, not that much yardage, though. And obviously, um, Zay Flowers is not at the same Sunday nighter performance we saw him back in Week 12. But offensively for the Ravens, they did their job. I'll give them four pluses. Of course, they're going to have to do even better than that, especially through the air next week because they want to compete with that Niners offense. Damn, they're going to have to be really good. Defensively, they did get under 14 points, under 200 yards allowed. No, but Kyle Hamilton was pretty good. Um, Again, that one touchdown they gave was a little ugly, but... So that this defense was still really, really good. I'll give them five pluses. They're going to have to play even better, though, again, against the Niners next week. That's so such a good game. Time for the Jaguars. Part of the Jags offense, 35 plus points. No, no bad turnovers. Yep, they didn't. Do, well, honestly, no one. And Trevor's got to get the ball out quick. I mean, somewhat quick, but it wasn't crazy. Offensively, they just, again, could not convert any of the situations they got. Because they did move the football, but i got to give them six minuses, guys. Because their only touchdown was on a huge play. They really struggled once they got in the red zone. No receiver seemingly got any separation. And you can't win football games like that. It's simple as that. That's why they're in a free fall right now. That's why they might not even make the playoffs. Defensively, no fourth down collapses. No. Tyson Campbell, I didn't play, and obviously Josh Allen was pretty good, but again, they just failed to get the Lamar Jackson. I'll be honest, it was, that's probably the best defensive performance they could have gotten out of their defense. I'll give them actually probably eight pluses. They kept them in the football game, guys. The offense just could not score when they got in the situations. They were able to put the ball in the end zone there. They would have won this football game. Defensively, I can't really say that I can't play in it really at all. Getting a lot, you know, Lamar had a couple big runs. They didn't really stop the run overall. 251 yards against us, never that good. But this, um, the Ravens running game has been a lot better as of late. So, eight pluses for this defense. I really think they played a lot better than many would assume to. So, good job, defense. That's all I got for the... And of a week 15 Sunday recap. Hope you guys enjoyed the games. Hope you guys enjoyed Monday Night Football too. I have the recap for that tomorrow after the game. But with all that said, um, yeah. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the games. Hope you guys enjoyed Monday Night Football. <laughs>